Hi, this is Brian Hawkins, Next Step Survival, and I'm here today with Jeff B., uh, a member of our prepper community, and he's also heavily involved with Todd's Ready Your Future email group, and uh, he's also a regular on our biweekly Zoom meetings, for Zoom meeting for Ready Your Future. And Jeff had a, a house fire a, a couple of weeks ago. He didn't lose his house and nobody got hurt, so that's good. But he's here today to tell us exactly what happened and maybe offer some help and or tips and guidance for us. So I'll just pass it on to you, Jeff, and uh, you can uh, let us know exactly what happened there. Well, thanks, Brian. Um, well, it started as a, just a electrical breaker popping in the panel and I could not get it to stop tripping. So I even went and got a new one and uh, that didn't work. So. I was talking to a buddy on the phone and he was giving me some ideas to check. And uh, in the process of this, my grandson had come home and noticed that the siding on the front of the house was melting. I went outside to look at that. And then that's when I kind of realized there was a fire in the wall. The downside of that was I couldn't see flame. I could see smoke, but there was no way to access the fire. So I, I got all my fire extinguishers ready, tried to call 911. Of course, you know how that's going with uh, delays and, and kind of stuff. So eventually it melted enough of my siding that it had a couple of holes in it so I could stick the fire extinguisher in there and, and sprayed that. And that's what actually put the fire out. It was out and everything was calmed down by the fire by the time the fire department actually showed up. So there was a lot of lessons learned as far as what to have on hand, a real world get out now. You don't have 30 minutes to uh, grab your favorite bug out items and and that kind of stuff. You have to kind of choose what your plan is going to be. Do you stay and fight or do you walk away and let it go? Without the fire extinguishers, I would have lost my house. It was that close. Before we get into the other stuff, I just had a couple of quick questions. What was it inside the wiring? Did you ever learn? Was it like a um, frayed wire or a broken wire? Or Yeah, it was a, uh, in the older section of my house, there was a wire nut. It should have been to code it would have been in a junction box, but it was just a wire nut. So that's what broke down. And that ultimately, as that shorted out, that's what was tripping the breaker, but it kept getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Then probably the insulation or, or something, the wall board yeah. or something. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It was just in an old, the old part that was actually a garage before I closed it all off. It was kind of out of place, out of mind, electrical, should have been done correctly. When the fire department got there and started, you said they hit your wall. An article, by the way, Jeff wrote an article on Next Step Survival. I'll post that with this video here. But in the article, you mentioned what, that when the fire department got there, they used some sent, some tool or something to check the heat on the wall and then hit your wall with water. Did they go into the wall with the water? No, no. They, they came into the, inside the house. The thing they use is a, is a temperature monitor. So it can penetrate the walls or, or whatever, but <clears throat> it just picks up heat. So they were getting temperatures around 115, 120 degrees. So that's when he decided he wanted to bust open the sheetrock and go into the wall. So from there, they just used the water. The water wasn't there to put out any fire. It was literally just to cool down the wall. Flood, did it flood your house? Oh, no, no, no. No, I mean, this. Uh -huh. the water they used was like in a tank the size of a fire extinguisher. I mean, it was really small. What you said in the article was the first thing you did was turned off the house power. I'm not an electrical expert or anything, but I, I believe that's probably the first step to saving your house for an electrical fire. I've never thought about it before. A lot of us wouldn't think to do that, but by cutting the power to your house and whatever's igniting the fire stops, right? That was probably the smartest thing you could do first is just to cut that power. There's two parts to that because I initially had the breaker blown for that room. So that one was already tripped. So technically there was nothing else feeding that room. You know, I don't know if I really needed to throw the main breaker but I did just as a precaution. But that said, there went all my light. There went everything. So, you know, then, then you're looking for flashlights and other ways to see. But, you know, it was two o'clock in the afternoon. So just open the blinds. And was there a lot of smoke in the house? Very little. Most of it, most of the smoke vented outside through the siding. However, the smell of the smoke is very 
very difficult to get rid of. That's scary because your house could be on fire and you wouldn't even know it. It's not bringing smoke in. So it's all sealed from the wallboard and stuff. So if you have an inside wall fire, it could be well on its way before you even were aware of it, especially if you were sleeping in another room or another floor or something. Yeah, we were literally getting ready to leave. Had it busted through one more board, it would have been in my attic and uh, it would have been over. Post call. Good thing you raved that out. So did you want to go over a couple of ideas, tips for people when it comes to, I mean, everybody can't save their house. I mean, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you got to jump through the window, obviously you're not going to fight a fire. We can only do so much, but right. as far as uh, some some of the things that you went through and that you that you learned through this process. Yeah, I mean, I, I was honestly, I, I was very lucky. I was there. I, I had the fire extinguishers. I could at least attempt, which this case I won. You know, once it's gone, once you see open flames, that's a different ball game. You've probably talked to a lot of people that have had kitchen fires and a grease fire can torch a kitchen in, in just seconds. Yeah, the big lesson is two fire extinguishers are not enough. Anybody that hasn't used a fire extinguisher be shocked at how quickly it pleaded. So I, I had stopped at car fire one time and it turned into a complete loss. And it was just a little bit, there was smoke and some fire on top of the, the car or on top of the car engine. He had opened up the hood and I grabbed the fire extinguisher, which I believe is a 10 pound in the, in the trucks. So I grabbed ABC, I believe. So I grabbed the, the fire extinguisher and started trying to put this fire out. And I was amazed at how little it did. It was done in probably a minute. I couldn't spray. It was empty. So it's amazing how little there is in one of those containers. But what else other than uh, fire extinguishers? You learn what other people's important items are. And they're not necessarily the same ones that you think. You want to elaborate on that at all? Or? It first kind of got to be the point where it's a real fire. I told my wife to get our cars out of the driveway. So she moved the cars out and called 911. And then that was just a hurry up and wait. So I handed my phone off to uh, somebody else. I didn't have time to sit there and be on hold. So my wife come back up and I said, look, I said, if this thing goes, it's gone in seven minutes. If you want anything out of that house, go get it. So she ran inside, grabbed her family Bible, which was right next to mine, but mine didn't come. Her dad's ashes and her work laptop. In her mind, that's what was important and left a thousand dollars in cash that we were taking on vacation in two days. Hindsight, yeah. Yeah. she's like, yeah, I can't believe I did that. And all I grabbed was my EDC bag. I, I literally threw it out in my backyard away from the house. On her defense, have to think if you haven't already pre-planned that in your mind. Yeah. In, in your EDC bag, and you mentioned in the article, you have copies of all your important document, digital version of that. Do you happen to keep those documents in a fireproof safe as well? Yeah, I have several copies. I'm not really sure how well those work, you know, paper inside of it. I, I haven't seen any. So it, it buys you time, but. Yeah. Complete loss may just take everything out. Yep. And as far as your perhaps your food pantry and your gear and stuff like that, you weren't really concerned? It, it, I didn't have time. I had considered what I was about to lose, but it was either try to save stuff or save the whole thing. And you're insured, I'm sure. So Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one way of updating all your stuff later on when you rebuild. You can get stuff that doesn't, it's got a, a new extended expiration date. Yeah, yeah. So after everything had settled down and, you know, there's just a big hole in my house, my wife's concern was we wouldn't be able to go on vacation. So this happened on a Saturday. We were supposed to leave Monday morning on vacation. And she thought we were going to have to cancel vacation. I said, why would we do that? I said, if this thing was a pile of ashes, what's the first thing the insurance company is going to tell you to do is go get a hotel? Well, I already had reservations, so just not in town. Everything's all the work is going to be waiting for you when you get back. Exactly. Okay. Nothing was going to be fixed in a day or two if it was a total loss. So, so that's yeah. good advice. You're not stressing out over it. You were actually probably felt pretty fortunate that, that it happened when it did, not while you were gone away from home on vacation or sleeping or something. So it, Yeah. The, the other thing was, uh, you know, because of the smoke smell with the dogs being here, we had people coming over multiple times a day to uh, let the dogs out and, and do their thing. 
And you had some community help as far as getting the wiring repaired and wallboard and everything. And, and you're a do it yourself or so you were able to tackle stuff without paying a contractor a ton of money. Yeah. I mean, we, my, uh, my neighbor come over, my grandson's mom and her boyfriend, that's what he does is remodels houses. So literally I think I had to buy one sheet of sheetrock, everything else we already had. I I think I had to get in a uh, junction box to put in the wall, but yeah, other than that, I had everything half to three quarters of the work done by the next day. Or you even started vacation. So yeah. Yeah. So in hindsight, um, what would you do differently? You know, I I think I put it in the article that now there's some of those more important items are a little closer together. I mean, I don't even think I had my wallet on me at the time. It it would have been toast. So I don't know. I did have to uh, replace all my fire or smoke detectors because none of them went off. So I wasn't taking any chances, just bought new ones, new fire extinguishers. I didn't know it at the time, but the garden hose on the front side of my house had the tip broken off. So I could not put any water pressure to the house. So we had a hose from the back side of the house shooting over the top of the house just to try to keep it wet. But no, I mean, I don't think I could have done anything different besides walk away and let it go. I mentioned before that my wife and I both have separate bug out bags and then I have an ADC bag. And in the top, there's two pieces of paper in in the top of each one of our pack. One of them are for things that need to be updated. It's a reminder to every six months what has batteries in it, food that needs to be replaced, that type of stuff. The other one is if you have time, what to grab. Obviously you're in the middle of a crisis and this isn't the time to do that. My thought was, you know, the sheriff beats on your door and like you got 20 minutes or 10 minutes to get out get out evacuation or whatever that helped mentally for you to know what to grab yeah one thing i didn't even consider is being a prepper i have my emergency cash it's in a fireproof safe with all my physical documents and that's a few thousand bucks and i didn't even think to grab it i just had to trust that either a I was going to win this fight for the fire, or that the fire department would be here soon enough, and my fireproof safe was going to last as long as it said it did on the package. I mean, you, you got to have some kind of faith in your in your setup that worst case scenario it, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. I don't know if it's a little OCD, but all that cash is wrapped in multiple layers of aluminum foil, so there's no way it can catch fire. It may come out burnt, crispy but it's not catching fire. I keep my pack at the door or close to the front door. It's not like you're not going to trip over it, but you can grab it on your way out the door. My wife's as well. Of course, it doesn't help because this, this all made me think. So while you, I'm learning your story, I'm thinking, what would I do? And if you wake up in the middle of the night, like I said, and you have to go through your window to get out, I'm not even going to have time to get my bug out bag, my EDC bag or anything. You can't prepare for every scenario. So you just have to do the best. And there's no sense in even trying. Otherwise, you're going to be using your bug out bag for a pillow or something. And nobody wants to go through that. Just like your wallet, that would be a painful ordeal. Having to start your new adventure as you try to find a place to stay. That's how, that's something else you might want to, people could think about is what where would you go? But without any identification, no ATM card, all that type of stuff, can't access. Yeah, it's definitely food for thought. I'm glad you're okay and your family's okay and you have... Uh, bug in location your house is back intact so that's all good and I appreciate you coming by and telling us a story I, I knew a lot of it but I know a lot of us on the ready your future email group was curious exactly what was going on we all learn from other people's ordeals and stuff when you share what you learned you're helping the entire community and I appreciate that any final thoughts before we uh, close out no I, I I just really would encourage people to to really sit down and think this through because uh, a plan, delegate tasks, everybody has something to grab. Nobody can grab it all. Think it through. All right. Well, I'll close this out and I appreciate you, Jeff. And it was uh, it was uh, nice of you to come on and share that and, and write an article for uh, Next Step Survival. So this is Brian Hawkins with Jeff B. And I appreciate your time. We'll see you later. Hawkins Take out. care.